that's the problem I think that games have is that whenever a game tells you what to do, it robs you from the sense of accomplishment that you get from figuring out how to do it. This is actually interesting. People have been talking about, you know, guidelines and things like that for games a lot. Here we go. So there's been a bit of a discourse lately that's been brewing on a few sites like Twitter and yeah. whatnot over the last week or so, and it has to do with the nature of signposting in games, which naturally piqued my game design brain's interest to investigate further. Essentially, what kicked everything off was the demo for the latest installment in the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy. A user posted this image talking about how the yellow paint virus has infected Final Fantasy, referencing how a lot of modern titles have been using uh -huh. random splatterings of paint, typically yellow or white, yeah. to help direct players as to where they need to go. And it seems like a lot of players are starting to get tired of this trope. Now to explain, what this is is a game design element called signposting. And signposting is a pretty self-explanatory concept. It is quite sure. literally just any means of helping direct a player towards more of a game's content. The same way that you might come across a literal sign helping direct people towards a nearby town. Signposting itself can take many distinct forms. Something as simple as a mini-map with icons on it or a quest marker is a form of signposting that directs a player towards content using the game's user interface. But many games these days are trying to implement more diegetic signposting, meaning that instead of using a meta element such as the aforementioned quest markers in the UI, they're trying to incorporate their signposting more into the world itself, using things like literal signs that exist in the world or other techniques such as light. I think things like this make sense. The problem is whenever you see the yellow paint, you realize that you're playing a video game in a way that you don't whenever it's not there. It's like an immersion thing. It's not a problem. I don't think it's a really big problem either. But like, so here's the thing. The problem is that the reason why games have this is because a lot of game developers, this is my opinion, a lot of game developers aren't very good at communicating directions. Like, there are a lot of quests and things like that in games where they don't really tell you what the fuck to do. So, like, you don't know, there's no indicator or feedback of what the right option is. You just have to decide, oh, well, I'm just going to keep trying random things until something works. So getting lost sucks. Yeah, getting lost does suck and not knowing what to do also sucks. And there are things that like, for example, like very, very good games are able to do this intuitively. So like, for example, um, you know, you have like in Monster Hunter, there are different things that you can intuitively do. They don't have to necessarily tell you to do this or Elden Ring is the same thing. Good example. Uh, it's just that again, like in Dragon's Dogma, it's like there's a lever and the lever th thing isn't there, well then go get it and then put it in the lever. They don't have to tell you to go put it in the lever because you see a broken lever and you get the new lever and you put it in there and it's obvious, right? And so that's the problem I think that games have is that whenever a game tells you what to do, it robs you from the sense of accomplishment that you get from figuring out how to do it. But the issue is that a lot of the game developers can't make a game that can give you that sense of accomplishment because the tools that you're given to solve the problem are incoherent or incomplete. So that's generally what I think happens is that things are not communicated well and these different levels of handholding effectively are done because the developer doesn't have time to create a more intuitive or a better designed puzzle. That's what I think it is. The path you need to traverse, or yes, covering things in yellow paint, which brings us to the topic yeah. of discussion. Why are so many people getting upset at this use of yellow paint as a form of signposting? Well, first things first, there is one argument that I've seen that I think is mostly a straw man argument, or at the very least, I hope it is, which is that some people are just saying that signposting as a concept is overly handholdy and players should have to actually explore and understand their environment to progress instead of you having the game tell you where to go so right. explicitly. Now, the reason why I hope that this is not a real argument that people are making is because nearly every game worth its salt has signposting in it. Something the problem, but that's not really what the issue is. The issue is whenever it's overt and it's bad. It's kind of like good editing or good CGI. It's invisible whenever it is done well. So the fact that people are complaining about it at all means that it's not being done well. As like in Dark Souls 1, here's a great example. In Dark Souls 1, 
you are completely led where to go. It's like whenever you go in and you fight the asylum demon for the first time, the door literally opens on the left. It's obvious what to do, right? If you're paying attention, then it's like, again, it even says as the bird is taking you over to Lordran, you need to hit the fucking bells, figure out where the bells are. One's really high, one's really low go down there. That is also, in a way, directing the player. So it's not like you're really starting Dark Souls 1 with a completely directionless approach. And then even after that, like whenever you get the Lord's, the Lord Vessel, Guinevere literally tells you, your job is to get these things and then you put them in the bowl and then you kill the guy. Well, there it is. You know what to do. Even Legend of Zelda back in the day. What do you do in Legend of Zelda? Well, you go to the different castles, you get the castles, and they tell you what to do. It's just that it's done in a way that's not immersion breaking. Were you aware of the yellow paint issue before watching this video? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd seen people talk about it before, absolutely. It's how Mario starts on the left side of the screen and faces towards the right yeah, is a form exactly. of signposting yeah. that tells the player which direction they need to go in order to progress. The fact of the matter is that most games need to have signposting in them. And also there's like immediate feedback whenever you do the wrong thing. Like if you turn the other way in Mario, you can't go anywhere. So it's like just by process of elimination, oh, I keep trying to go left, I can't go left. Well, I guess I'm going to try and go right help direct players as to where they need to go especially here's as another example uh in dark souls one how do you know where the ladders are in blight town the torches that's right there's torches by every ladder games grow more complex and detailed yeah. and the way forwards becomes less and less inherently obvious and also keep in mind signposting isn't always just about directions it can also be used to denote things like mm -hmm. what you can and cannot interact with in a level like how in half-life yeah. 2 all of the boxes with actual supplies in them are designed to be extremely unique in shape to yeah. help differentiate them from all the other generic breakable crates in the game so that the player doesn't have to waste time breaking every box they come across hoping that it'll have supplies in it. Stuff like yeah. that is still technically a form of signposting. However, despite how absurd the idea of removing all forms of signposting from a game is, that is not to say that the people decrying the use of yellow paint are necessarily That's not what people want wrong. Yeah. There is clearly an issue here that needs to be addressed, and I think that Sam Winkler, a narrative director at Gearbox, put it best. Inevitably, in almost any given game, players will need to be handled at some point, yep, but they don't is. want yeah. to know that they're being handled. Exactly, yeah, because like the moment that like you're being led along and they're telling you what to do, you d you no longer own the accomplishment of the, of the success. Yeah, that there it is. Essentially what he's getting at is that signposting absolutely always needs to be in a game. Anyone who has done any amount of playtesting can confirm how frustrating it can be to watch a new player have absolutely no idea where to go. I wonder who he's talking about. Probably some fucking dumbass. Probably some idiot. ...in your level. But people Which, by the way, like, I've seen other people play video games for the first time. They're even stupider than I am. I don't even want to hear about it. I'll watch them all the time. Streamers play games like, oh, what do you mean you can't figure this out? Oh, you ran into it again? Wow, what a surprise. You ran into the fire. It set you on fire again? Uh-huh. ...don't like having yeah. their hand held. They want to feel like they figured out the path forwards themselves, even though usually they'll end up needing some help along exactly. the way. The ultimate lesson here is that ideally, signposting needs to be something that is simultaneously obvious while also That's the same reason why people complain about easy modes in games. Because, like, for example, like, you can get really good gear in Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring and one-shot the bosses. But being able to do that is effectively turning on an easy mode, but at the same time, that easy mode is earned by the player. So, like, the player has a sense of accomplishment for being able to access this. It's not like they are consciously choosing to say that I'm bad at the video game. ...something that is invisible so that the player doesn't even realize that they're being led around by the designers. Yeah. Now, that might sound like a paradox, but I think that this is actually very similar in concept to things like how good tutorials are designed, or even how good CGI is used in a movie. So that's the example I If you I watch used. channels yeah. like Corridor Digital or any other visual effects artist, yep. then you're probably there familiar with the term of the best CGI is invisible. Lots yep. of people decry the use of CGI in movies because it's it the makes stupidest thing. 
things look fake. But that's because the only CGI you recognize is, the fake is stuff. bad CGI. Yeah. Whereas the best CGI blends into a scene seamlessly to avoid pulling you out of a movie. Similarly, in games, people don't like having to read a million text boxes or look at one of these dumb controller charts for a tutorial. If you've watched stuff like Aaron's sequelitis on Mega Man X or... Yeah, this the has always been a complaint that I've had with games is because, like, I'm the kind of person that... Like, I very, very quickly lose interest with following directions. And I like to learn things through trial and error. Like, I learn the right thing to do by doing everything else wrong million and a half video essays about Super Mario 1-1, then you've no doubt been familiarized with this concept of an invisible tutorial mm -hmm. that teaches the player naturally through gameplay yeah. without even making the player realize that they're being taught. Like, it, there's that, and then, like, super long story expositions at the beginning of games. Like, those are the two things I hate about video game starts. Like, the, my, my favorite types of games are, like, Elden Ring, where it's like there is a tutorial in Elden Ring. Because you can either go up into Limgrave, or you can go down and do the tutorial where you fight the soldier of Godric. So, like, even Elden Ring has a tutorial, but you're not realizing it. Yeah, get right into the action learned by experience. Exactly. Yeah, like, I, I hate games. It's like, I remember I played, um, like, uh, Honkai Star Rail, and Honkai Third Impact was the same thing. Where they're just using all these proper nouns of, like, these events and these things. It's like, how can any person like, realistically keep track of all of this at the same time. Because, like, I view people's memory generally as, like, a web. So, like, if you don't have any frame of reference for what somebody is telling you, you're probably going to you're going to forget it really fast. So, like, not only are you overloading the person with a lot of information, but they're going to forget the information anyway. So you're just wasting your time. You're wasting everybody's time. So essentially the heart of the issue is how do we direct players with invisible signposts while still making sure that the signs themselves are obvious enough for everyone to mm -hmm. see. It's a delicate balance to achieve. When the signposts yeah. are too obvious, you get yellow paint and its contemporaries where yep. everyone just sees it as blatant handholding. But if it's too subtle, then you risk lots of players getting lost and missing out on content, if not just entirely dropping the game altogether. And you also have, by the way, there are just simple the problem of developers that do not communicate ideas very well in games and like there are also games that are done that way intentionally and you can say that like okay this is a design decision and we are intentionally making this ambiguous so the player has to figure it out but i think the problem like the problem with that can sometimes be that if people have to figure it out they're just going to look it up and so like you kind of reach like this the perfect like middle ground is whenever the player could look it up, but it also is intuitive to solve. So then the player chooses to solve it themselves rather than looking it up. Like, for example, um, like this is the way that I so like, I, I, as I said, I've been playing Dragon's Dogma one off stream every night. And I finally uh, I fought the Griffin. I killed it last night. But the night before that, I had to bait the Griffin out and there was no intuitive reason that i would have to kill a goblin and then put a goblin in the indicator for baiting the griffin like there's no way that i could intuit that as an individual because if i stood in it if the griffin is a problem for people and it's eating people then why wouldn't me being the bait serve as bait it doesn't make it doesn't make sense right so i think that really like making sure that a video game has very strong internal logic is hyper important like because if you have strong internal logic you can create situations where a player can intuit what to do and how to solve a problem the pawns tell you i don't think that they did yeah they said we're going to the bonds tell you to put a goblin there no they didn't tell me you turned off chatter no i turned it back on it depends on pawn personality okay well either way right so like my experience in the game there's no way for me to intuit that or understand what to do, right? And so I think that if you do make something that's so obscure and hard to understand, that then people will just immediately look it up themselves. That's the difference. So like you have to like have that middle ground where it's not just so arcane and so esoteric that you can't even begin to figure it out. And unless like you've like kind of done like 15 different like different types of trial and error, but you also don't want to have it be yellow paint. Well, that's the thing. This isn't actually an argument about signposting. 
yeah. many people think it's, it's about the implementation of it. I originally thought it was about signposting. But in reality, what's actually being discussed here is the nature of being veritable, ver, verisim, verisimilitude, <laughs> verisimilitudinous. Oh my god! That doesn't mean real. That means a plausible simulation of real. You know it's fake, but it feels acceptable. You yep. can buy in. You can suspend disbelief. Oh yes, thank you, Dan Olson. But yeah, it's right. that the issue sure. people have with yellow paint. I didn't paint know that was a word. Isn't that it's just a form of signposting? Mm -hmm. It's that it isn't a verisimilitudinous form of signposting. It doesn't feel like it fits. It doesn't in the... make you feel like you're a fucking idiot. It's like, oh, go do this quest. The quest is over there. Run over there. Okay. Well, I mean, fuck. It seems pretty simple. It's kind of boring. world that is being yeah, established. Like wow, quest. Yeah, exactly. Game having all of these random handholds and other markings mm -hmm. just so happen to be covered in the same yellow paint just looks weird and out of place without some kind of justification. Yeah. Like let's compare this to some other games such as Valve's catalog with Half Life and Portal. Which, by the way, for those of you who don't know, most of Valve's games include developer commentaries that can be a great way to learn some game design fundamentals for those of you that are interested. But one thing that gives it's brought up a lot in some of these discussions is how they direct players throughout their games. A very common technique that they like to use is to place the player in a darker environment and then use light to direct the player to the path forwards. Just this like Blight Town and the ladders in Dark Souls 1. There it is. It's right there. There's a million ways to justify a simple light source existing. And in also, the um, From Software did it again, or before actually this, with Demon Souls in the swamp area environment so it almost never feels strange or out of place sure having only a single street lamp working might yeah. seem weird in the real world but in a post-apocalyptic setting like half-life where everything sense. is run down and decrepit it makes sense the player doesn't yep. question it but they use lots of much more obvious and explicit forms of signposting too. For example, I've seen some people bring up how blatant some of the graffiti in Portal is, with literal mm -hmm. arrows pointing the player towards hidden content because playtesters kept on missing it. But there's two interesting points to be made about this. For one, like I said, I think that this feels a lot more verisimilitudinous because it's immediately understandable that another human being left these messages because you're walking through a test chamber that clearly other people have gone through so it adds yeah no that does make sense makes a lot of sense to the story that you aren't the first test subject to go through these trials and it's like another good example of this i'm thinking of is you know in the hell divers 2 the uh the tutorial where like there's a bunch of like i think bullet holes and like shit and like maybe i don't know if it's dead people or something like that like right before you go up against those two big like turrets that shoot you. So like, you know, oh my God, like I, I want to move down, right? There's blood. Yeah, yeah, I forgot exactly what it was. Might have been many, many more people before you who have lost their minds in these chambers. Of course, people would leave graffiti in that circumstance, mm -hmm. especially if they found something that they want future test subjects to try and find as well. Sure. But the second thing that I find interesting and kind of hilarious when people talk about portal signposting is that they rarely talk about the actual main test chamber levels themselves. Like, you cannot get much more explicitly signposted than you do in portal's fundamental level design. Every chamber is a featureless white room with almost nothing to interact with beyond the relevant puzzle elements. Like, buttons. I think also like another big issue with this is that a lot of the dialogue on the internet about this comes from people that are extreme gamers you know these are hardcore capital g video game aficionados okay like they've been playing video games for 20 years they have you know there's their top 50 video games what do they do whenever they're bored they play video games so like a lot of video games if you've played for example like for me an elden ring Elden Ring was easy for me to understand what to do because I played every Dark Souls game. I played Bloodborne. I played Demon Souls. And then I also played Sekiro. So guess what? Whenever I play uh, Elden Ring, I understand what to do intuitively because I played all these other games. It's the same thing as like whenever I played Monster Hunter, like I had problems picking up some things. Like, for example, the menus. The menus didn't make sense to me. Why is that? Because I hadn't played a lot of games that were built for console and ported to PC. I just hadn't played games like that. 
And so like the intuition that a person would have to go through certain actions just wasn't there because I never developed that knowledge. I never even knew that this was a thing. And so like, here's a really good example. Um, how many of you guys have a parent or a grandparent who doesn't know, have to, doesn't know how to turn on or turn off an appliance, right? Many people. And how many of those appliances have the button on it that has the circle with the line down the middle, right? And so all of them have that. But the parent doesn't know that because they don't have that baseline of knowledge. They have no idea. Like, for example, like your grandparents, like some, you know, your grandpa might have known how to fucking build a car, but he doesn't understand the universal power signal. Right. And so that's what the issue is, is that a lot of times whenever people complain about this, they don't realize that, like, they are the extreme and they know all of this stuff already. And so, of course, it's easy for them. It's like, for example, like, here's another good point. Remember whenever I talk about how wow is really easy or sorry, wow is really hard. And then you have people in chat that are saying it's easy. And I like look at their account and they've been playing for 15 years. I mean, fuck, if you've been playing 15 years, it better be fucking easy by now. I mean, holy shit, man. Right? And so it's people don't even, they're not even aware of the extent of their knowledge. In cubes, every button has an explicit label on it with a dotted line directing you to what puzzle element it interacts with. Every level's exit door is explicitly designed and labeled the exact same way to ensure uh -huh. that the player knows exactly where the goal of each level is and what needs to be done yeah, to unlock obvious. it. I mean, hell, there is a literal gigantic 10 foot tall glowing sign at the start of every level that tells you what every element you have to interact with will be for that level. And yet, I've seen almost nobody involved in this discourse, even when explicitly talking about Portal, ever bring this up. And why is that? Because Portal explicitly takes it place- It doesn't make you look like a fucking idiot. It doesn't make you think like you're a fucking idiot. That's the problem. This discussion is primarily about how something makes a person feel, and not necessarily the reality of it in a setting where you're navigating artificially created test chambers created by humans for other humans to navigate and solve. If you took Portal's test chamber signposting and put mm -hmm. it in virtually any other game, then yeah, it would be just as, if not far more, blatantly handholdy and out of place as yeah, some sure. people claim yellow paint is. But because of the setting that is established for Portal, these puzzle elements work perfectly fine. Another good example of this is in Armored Core 6, whenever you're in the training regiment, you're literally in a simulation, and the simulation is created and designed in a way for you to do training. So it doesn't feel like you're being handheld in the same way. It's context, yeah, exactly as a means of directing the player to where they need to go and what they can and cannot interact with. This is also why whenever you finally break free of the test chambers in Portal, suddenly all of the explicit puzzle element signposting completely mm -hmm. disappears, because it would no longer make any sense for these elements to exist outside of the test chambers. Yeah. Thus, the game shifts towards much more relatively subtle forms of signposting, like using the aforementioned method of having light sources direct the player instead. Essentially, the main takeaway, in my opinion, is that signposting can be as blatantly obvious as you want as a designer, but only if it makes sense in the world that you establish. Otherwise, you risk breaking that precious verisimilitudeness. It's, it's the fucking immersion, right? It's like it, it takes you out of the game. It's the same reason why I, I think that it's bad if video games have... Like, if there's ever a time that you can access a video game shop from the game itself, it's not a good thing. And like you can never see USD or anything like that because it takes you out of the immersion of the game. Like Final Fantasy 14 doesn't have that. And I think it's a great thing. I wish more games didn't. That causes the player to question your level design or otherwise break their suspension of disbelief. To try and bring this discussion towards a close. Another and it's also like think about which one is harder to do. To create an internal game logic system that is intuitive to players that will allow players to logically deduce what the next action that they should take is inside of the video game. Or you just paint the thing yellow. That way they know where to go. You put an arrow. Well, I'd say, uh, you know, 
I'd say the arrows are a lot easier and the yellow is a lot easier. And I think that's why it happens too, is it's much easier to do that. Example I really want to talk about is how Half-Life 2 literally also uses yellow paint as a form of signposting too, but it does so in such a way that I don't think anyone complains about. There are a variety of caches with extra ammo and healing items strewn throughout the game, but they're always marked by these spray-painted yellow lambda symbols. So oh no, they're using yellow paint, that means it's terrible, right? Well, that's the thing. The game provides context for their existence. In Half-Life 2, too. You were yeah. literally traversing a secret underground railroad for refugees trying to escape from the Combine. Thus, it's understandable that they would use some sort of Thieves Can't style symbology to try and denote secret caches of supplies for other travelers. Right. It's implied that dozens, if not hundreds of other people have used this railroad before Gordon, and you encounter tons of people that are still actively maintaining it as you make the journey yourself. So, of course, they've left signs and supplies to help each other out along the way so that just goes to show that given the right context even the dreaded yellow paint itself can be used as an effective means of signposting without making it feel too handholdy or like it's breaking the player's immersion people just don't like to feel stupid like i don't know what else besides that that's it I mean, to use one more direct example, yeah. Horizon Forbidden West also highlights every single ledge and climbable object with a bright yellow marking. But again, the difference is that in Horizon, the main character, Aloy, has a magic iPhone earpiece that can project augmented reality holograms over her vision. So naturally, she simply programmed it to highlight ledges like this to help her out on her journeys. So yeah, ultimately, the core of this whole issue is really more about the fact that more and more games are trying to implement more diegetic gameplay elements. You know, stuff like how every element of Dead Space's UI is meant to be justified in-universe. But some developers seem to struggle with implementing certain elements like signposting into their game's universe seamlessly. Because it takes longer and like they have limited time. So I think that's really the, that's the issue, right? And so like if you and also like if you take that one step farther, what do probably all of the games that are rushed and people don't have time in order to fix the intuitive design of the game? What do they probably all have in common that that also affected other elements of gameplay as well? So almost every single game that probably has these like really, really obvious blatant examples of this was probably rushed in a way that made it to where the developers were probably not able to fully uh, cook everything else as well. You see what my point is? How it creates kind of like that confirmation bias of every game that also has this kind of stuff might also have problems because this kind of stuff is an indicator of either bad devs or devs that don't have enough time. That and point makes no fucking sense? No, no, actually... No, I... Really? Yeah, w was am I explaining that in a good way? Because I think that, like, if... In my mind, it makes a lot of sense. Am I saying it in the wrong way? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, all right, good. Be fair, I think I do prefer to be guided by the game's level design and art assets more than a simple compass or minimap. But if your side posts are going to be as blatantly obvious and out of place as just highlighting every interactable object with random unjustified yellow paint splatters or something to that effect, then maybe you might as well just make it a part of the game's UI instead, as that might be less immersive breaking than trying to eat your cake and have it too. After I all think also like another factor of this is because a lot of players uh, don't like getting lost and they get, they don't like being annoyed. And so and, and now like video games because of streaming and YouTube videos and like the fixation around like min maxing, a lot of video games are built to uh, to be min maxed. And so because of that, players ask for these tools because I think that average players are much more goal oriented than they were maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So now a lot more people want this kind of stuff because like you obviously see people complaining about it, but you also see people that are complaining about it not being easy to understand as well. And then people stop it. Nobody asked for it? No, no. I think that like whenever you say nobody asked for it, you're right because nobody in your community asked for it because they are making these changes for people that are not you. So like the, the, these changes and like these types of uh, handholding basically uh, are done for people that aren't going on Twitter to talk about video games. These are people that like play a new video game once every three months and, 
you know, they play it for two hours, you know, every three days. Who cares if a single game holds people's hands? Some people need that shit, so don't play it, so don't. go. Some don't, so don't go play another game. Well, no, I mean, like, I would say that it's, like, for sure better to have a game that has internal logic that allows players to intuit decisions rather than telling a player what decision they should make is. I think it's boring. Well, there are also plenty of really simple signposting techniques that still don't rely on stuff like mini-maps while also trying to not be diegetic. Things like how in some games you can simply hit a button to automatically rotate the camera in the direction that you're meant to go. Or maybe a different button that highlights every interactable object yeah, on screen Final Fantasy 16 for a had few that seconds. With the dog. These sorts of things, in my opinion, work really well to help guide players that are stuck, and it's a technique that simultaneously isn't trying to be diegetic while also avoiding cluttering the screen with excess permanent UI elements. It's available. Well, there's also another factor of this is that a lot of games games there are a lot of and this started kind of i think like the first like main big game that was like really breakout for this is probably the last of us is that there are a lot of games that are effectively a cinematic experience that are you know that have added gameplay elements like it's not like this isn't really like a huge like difficult video game the purpose of the game is to let a person play through the story and play through the events so this type of design isn't as important at all times for anyone that might get stuck at any part of a game because people are playing also for being that completely invisible and unnecessary f so that players that don't get stuck mm -hmm. aren't forced to use them ultimately i do understand why so many games use yellow paint yeah, of it's course. really simple effective and easy to implement and you want your game to be completable by as many people as possible so you're going to want to minimize i don't know if i would agree that people completing the game is necessarily a massive metric for success i think that like there's a lot of people that complete games but the game wasn't very good and I think there's other games, like, for example, I bet a lot of people who played Elden Ring didn't complete Elden Ring. But they probably liked the game a lot. The amount of time that any given player might be lost or not it should know be, what It to should do. be dependent really, based off, like, why somebody stops playing. At the end of the day, playing. it's not that big of a deal. Like, I don't think anyone is actively going to avoid a game like Resident Evil 4 or Final Fantasy 7 just because it has yellow paint in it. Yeah, nobody And if you're unable show. to get the time or resources to implement something Most bad, people, like, this is the same thing, like I said, with, like, uh, you know, having, like, politics in a game or, like, woke shit in a game. Like, nobody's going to probably, like, it, it never makes a good game bad or a bad game good, but it can make a good game better or a bad game worse. Then typically you're going to want to lean a little bit more on the handholdy side of things, mm -hmm. since that's going to help out more players than it's going to annoy. But, yeah, I do think it is also... And also, like, keep in mind that it might look like on the internet it annoys way more people than it helps. That's because, again, on the internet, you are completely surrounded by other people that are lifelong video game players. Completely it's fair a different dynamic. to call games out for having poorly implemented diegetic signposting in the same way that people call out games for having overly handled the yeah, exactly. unskippable tutorials. It is something worth critiquing that could be done a lot better, and if nobody says anything, then developers won't have any reason to try and improve their techniques. So yeah. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I'm happy to continue the conversation in the comments down below. What's your stance on the whole yellow paint debate? Do you think I'm right in saying that it's less about the nature of signposting and more about how well integrated the signposting is in the 100%. game's world? He's 100% or do right. you think it's something else? Feel free to let me know. And if you liked what you saw, remember to leave me a like. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you can get notified of when I make more videos in the future. And if you really want to help the channel grow, then you can become a member or donate to my Ko-Fi to help me keep doing what I'm doing. But for now, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. This is a really good video. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I really like this video. I think that he gave a lot of really good examples, and... Like, for me, like, whenever I'm seeing this, I think about, like, all the examples that I know about. I'll link you guys the video. This is a great video. Like, it only, it only has 5,000 views. So, like, yeah, try to give this guy a sub and, and a like. He's only got 2,000 subs. Yeah, this is really, really well done, uh, especially for a channel that's, uh, that's it's pretty small about this. Absolutely. Yeah, there's the video. 
It's like people uh, claiming a game is uh, sinking because there's 0.5 Metacritic. You look at the data, only 2K people out of the 100,000 people have actually voted. Yeah, but I mean, like, uh, most good games don't have a 0.5 rating, though, right? And so, like, even then, I think it's important to keep in mind. But to me, like, I think that the main problem is whenever a game does it and it makes the player feel stupid or it breaks the immersion of the game. And I think also, like, it denies the player the ability to solve the problem themselves. Because whenever you remove the ability for the player to have a fail state or not be able to figure out what's going on, it's like if you can't lose, you also can't win. I don't think that a lot of games work very well whenever all they do is let you win and everything is like a massive guided experience. Like, for example, like World of Warcraft questing, like in Dragonflight or, you know, any of the other expansions, like it's kind of boring compared to Classic WoW, isn't it? Like, to me, it is. I think that, like, Classic WoW is just a better game in, like, every single way. Now, obviously, Dragonflight, they tried to do a much different job with it. But at the end of the day, like, you're not really reading the quests. You're not really processing any of the lore or the information. You're just kind of going through them as fast as you possibly can. And I understand that in Classic WoW, you can just download an add-on. But I'm talking about, like, as a baseline experience. Like, the baseline experience, they've basically uh, completely... Uh, remove the, the the reason to think right you, you no longer have to think you no longer have to make decisions and i do think that that's in a lot of cases a bad thing and there are our games like for example like dragon's dogma gives you some tools to solve problems and some tools they don't give you and so it's like there are some things that are like i would say dragon's dogma is a good example of having mostly very very good types of like design but like there are some things that are so ambiguous it's like i don't even know what to do right i have no idea what to do but i think that letting people personally i think the i the it's better to have things err on the side of not knowing what to do than actually knowing what to do because even if you don't know what to do through the game you can always look it up but if you already know what to do because the game tells you you can't unlearn that information does that make sense so it's better to err on the st on, on the side of discovery rather than the side of, um, you know, security. Discovery is better than security. Security probably isn't a good word for it, but that's the best one I can come up with right now. I'll link you guys the video again.